My name is Angela and I am going to help you learn the youth program or understand the youth program. So this video is for some people that may feel uncertain about the youth program or feel like the youth program isn't quite working for their family, they're failing at it, or maybe just that they should be doing more at church for doing your program. And that's where, that's not how the program works. This program is a home-centered, church-supported program. Any of the programs that we've done in the past have been church-centered and home-supported. But this one shifts that whole thing so now it's home-supported, or home-centered, sorry, and church-supported. And that really shifts who is going to be running the program. Now, instead of it mostly being the leaders running the program, the parents are running the program. And it can seem immense because you're already doing so many things. You're already so busy, you've got work and so many other things, and now they want us to do the youth program at home. That's why we're doing this video, is to help those in our wards be able to feel like they can get a handle on the program and help the youth do the program, and at the same time, help leaders like me be able to run the program to help support your youth. So in order to do that, we're going to cover the first part of it. So this program helps build individuals to become like Christ. And in order to build individuals to become like Christ, you're going to take them through four areas that Christ also grew up in strength in. So those four areas are spiritual, social, intellectual, and physical. But these areas are only the umbrella of the program. This is what spreads out over the program. In order to really run the program, <clears throat> you have to do this part that's underneath it. And the part that's underneath it is really the engine that runs the program. So you've got discovery, plan, act, and review. And for right now, I'm going to focus on the discovery part of this whole cycle. But you will be running through this whole cycle over and over and over and over again. And your youth is going to learn the cycle so that they will be able to essentially run over and over and over again because that's how they build themselves into a better person. That's how they build themselves to become like Christ. And the more we go through these parts of the circle, the more hopefully you'll get a handle on it and be able to be like, oh, I get it. It's not as much as I thought it was going to be. I can see how it'll work for our family and be able to adapt it so that you can do it with your youth and they'll be doing it even as an adult. And hopefully as we're doing it, you might recognize some things that you're doing as an adult. So, in order to do the program, I'm going to explain it in the way that it worked best for my family, and that's us doing it as family home evenings. There are ways that you can do it and adjust it to make it work for your families that we can just talk about later, but for right now I'm going to explain this discovery part of it as if it's family home evening lessons. Now, the part about doing this whole cycle is that you have to have your kids have a buy-in point. If they don't have a buy-in point, the program in general isn't as important to them. So the best way to show this or explain it is to look at one of our youth. So we've got a youth, Dan. He's an awesome youth, he's a teenager, and he really wants to do the youth program because he wants to do what the church asks him to do. So he goes to his parents, and Dan's like, I want to do the youth program. And Dan's parents are like, great. That sounds great. Dan, you're supposed to pick out of one of these four areas to do the program. How about we do spiritual? And Dan's like, that sounds great, Mom. Okay, well, Dan, in spiritual, some things that you need to work on. Uh, Dan, you know, how about you work on prayers? And Dan says, oh, okay, Mom, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. I need to work on prayers. Okay, Dan, well, how can we create a plan for working on prayers? Well, they decide on two weeks. And Dan's going to try to pray morning and night for two weeks. So they go through that plan, then he decides he does it, goes back to his mom. But the problem is, is that throughout that whole program, Dan doesn't have a lot of buy-in. He doesn't have a lot of reason that he is doing the program. He, he did it because he felt like he was supposed to do it. Now, let's run through that with a lot more buy-in on Dan's part. Okay? So Dan decides he wants to do the program, goes to his parents, and he's like, hey, I want to do the program. And his mother says, oh, that's great. But this time, instead of making suggestions, she's going to ask questions. Ah, oh, Dan, that's great. We'd love to see you do the program. In order to do the program, uh, what do you want to do in 10 years? Oh, 
10 years? What do you mean, Mom? Oh, what do you, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, I, I want to have gone on a mission, maybe married somebody by then, and have a family, be an elder. Oh, oh those are great goals, Dan. I love those. Well, what do you think with missionary? How do you get to being a missionary? Well, what do you mean, Mom? Well, what kind of things do missionaries do? Well, the missionaries, they go out and teach. Then they uh, pray a lot and they read their scriptures a lot. Okay, Dan, well, is there anything you think you need to improve in those areas? Well, I don't do very good with praying. Okay, Dan, how about we set a goal for you to do praying so that you can be a better missionary? Well, I like that. I like that idea, Mom. And then they'll take through the cycle of planning how he's going to do it. He comes up with it. He acts upon it. And then at the next family home meeting, Mom checks in with Dan. Dan, how are you doing with prayers? Well, I didn't do that great this week. Okay, well, how can we improve? So again, that's where he begins going through the cycle. But more than anything, there's buy-in for Dan. Suddenly, Dan sees why he's praying more. He sees the purpose behind it, and it's his. He owns it. It's his goal, rather than it just being handed to him. So, in order to get buy-in from your kids, we're going to go through some of the ways that you can get buy-in from your kids. So, the way that we worked it in our family is we did it through family home meetings, and our first family home meeting, our kids talked about, who are you? So, initially it seems like an easy question, well, who are you? And the kids might be like, well, I'm a child of God. <laughs> but you want them to go deeper. Who are they? What is their purpose? How are they different from their other siblings? What makes them special? You want them to start delving into those kind of questions. And in order to do that, you need to ask them questions or give them, give them things that they're looking at or words that they're looking at um, so that they can start pulling from that. Like they might have a list of words like this and you say, do any of these words describe you? Or are these any, anything on these things you like? You also, also might want to ask them questions like, what do you lose time doing? Or is there something where, and you're in the middle of it, and five hours have gone by, mostly it's video games for boys, and my boys at least. Uh, what do you lose time doing? What are you so involved in that you were that focused? Maybe you're asking questions like, what made you, what made you feel great when you accomplished it? What's your love language, for those of you that know what love languages are? This is a great time because kids want to know about themselves and they haven't thought about love languages or they haven't thought about um, what accomplishment made me feel good. Uh, maybe it can be about world issues. What kind of world issues are you concerned about? And maybe you should learn some things about your kids that you never knew before. Uh, you might try things like what kind of interest do you have? What things have you always wanted to do but you've never quite gotten to do? Write those down. And it can take a lot of different forms. It can just be questions that you're firing out to the kids and they're writing them down. I would suggest that they write them down because recalling these things later is tougher than you think. So maybe they'll have a journal or they've got some papers that they're writing on because you're going to be covering some more things on this in your next Family Home Meeting lessons. So you're going to start having the kids ask themselves deeper questions than what do you want to do, right? So in order to do that, you're going to take some of this stuff and you're going to begin mind mapping them, right? So it's really small here on the board, but this is a type of mind mapping. And it looks really complex, but it actually isn't as complex as you think. And kids actually enjoy doing this, especially if they're helping each other out, their siblings out. So Dan, Dan in their family home meeting lesson, decided that he liked art, right? So we're going to help Dan mind map out his interest on art. And you can pull this from a lot of different things. And I think you'll find that when the family helps out, uh, you'll be surprised with some of the results. So in order to mind map art, we're going to take art and we're going to explore different areas of art. What kind of uh, professions can you do with art? Well, there's graphic design that they can do. That's a bubble there. They can uh, do fashion. Fashion. There. They can do pottery. 
for a painting. They might need to learn about color coordination in doing art. They might want to do animation. And that'll involve computers. And even off of one of these bubbles, you can pull more bubbles off. If they wanted to do fashion, they're going to need to learn sewing. Right? Or if they wanted to do fashion, they're going to have to learn about design. And how that works. Right? So even off of one of these bubbles, you can pull even more bubbles. Now the amazing and awesome part about this whole thing is at this point, as you're discovering things with your kids and who they are and what they want to do, this is when that church supported part really comes in. So as a leader, I hear that you've done this with your kid and you send some of this information to me. And now when I go to my youth leaders and their planning activities, they can have this in front of them and they can be like, Dan, Dan likes pottery. Doesn't Brother Johnson do pottery? Couldn't we do that as an activity? Oh, that sounds like a great idea. And now, that's where that church support would come in. We're supporting Dan in his interests of art by doing pottery. Brother Johnson in the ward is helping us as well by providing some of the clay that they might need and maybe he's got potter's wheels. And the rest of the quorum is supporting Dan as, as well because they're helping him achieve one of his goals or something that he's looking at. And this is really where a lot of the activities for the church can come from, is by doing this stuff at home, but then you send that information to us and we can support what you're doing at home or goals that they're working on as long as we know that this is what they're doing. I can tell you as a youth leader, to a somewhat large extent, some of your children are a bit of a mystery to us. <laughs> And it would be nice if you could expand things and send them to us for putting together a lot of the activities. But, again, this part of it is only a small part of it. Let's say we do pottery with Dan. And you're like, okay, Dan's doing that as an activity. He's got it covered. But it's just a small part of it. He's only teaching. He's got an hour that he's learning pottery. He still needs to go through this whole cycle and we as leaders, we can't, we can't take them, we're not supposed to take them through this whole cycle. This is where you follow up on, Dan, how did that go? Is there any other things that you learned about it? Would you want to do it again? You're asking further questions, but that's not for us to do, that's for the parents to do. And so that's again where it's home-centered, church-supported. Okay, right, so you've done some mind mapping, you sent it to your leaders, they're all excited doing activities. Another thing that you can do is patterns. So now that your kids have got some mind mapping, now that they've got some of the things that they're interested in, you're going to start doing a little more analyzing and pulling that together for the kids. And in order to do that, you're gonna ask some questions like, have you noticed that with what you do, you have a tendency to like doing things with other people? that you like involving other people in your activities, or that you're a good leader, and that you have a tendency to lead the group out. Have you noticed with the things that you talk about, this is stuff that you do by yourself, that you really don't like being with other people, that uh, you don't enjoy the activities where you have to do it all together and teamwork. Maybe you point out that they like building. A lot of the things that they do involve building or art, or even challenges. Wow, you have a lot of activities that really challenge you, that really pull um, and make you want to succeed. Those kind of things kids don't realize about themselves. And it's not until a parent begins looking for patterns or pointing out patterns, or even siblings pointing out patterns for each other, that they're beginning to get a picture of who they are. And by having a picture of who they are, they can also start looking on where they want to go which again comes to your next part. And you kind of heard it about it when we talked about Dan earlier. Where do you want to be in 10 years? So now you're going to ask him, where do you want to be in 10 years? And when you ask where do you want to be in 10 years, try to, try to expand that out. Not just the profession, like I want to be a doctor. Ask him questions like, well, what does your family life look like in 10 years? 
Uh, if you're going to have a family life with a wife and kids, you may need to do some things that uh, you know how to interact with your siblings so that you can interact with a spouse, um, be respectful, and know how to resolve arguments. Uh, you're going to ask them questions on what kind of things do you do to relax? What kind of hobbies do you have in 10 years? What kind of skills have you gained in 10 years? Which actually is coming up one of the ones down here. Uh, what kind of skills, and that can be a lesson that you talk about later, do you have at that time? Uh, what, spiritually, what does that person look like? Are they still part of the church? If they're going to be part of the church, how did they get there? So in 10 years, you want them to almost see a day in the life of that person. And who are they? So that they can start seeing where they're going and why they're going to want to get there. Another thing that you might want to ask them is the one that sits here. And I, my spelling, let's see, bucket. Bucket list. Had a mind part there. All right, so our bucket list. What kind of things, and this is even farther than 10 years, what do you want to accomplish in your life in general? Are you going to want to have places that you want to visit or languages that you're going to want to speak when you go there? You're going to ask them these kind of questions so that they can start seeing where they're going with everything, right? And why? Again, that buy-in. Why are we going that direction? So after they have a lot of this stuff all mapped out and they've got their papers and they're looking over everything, this is when, because this is pretty free and uh, you're not too worried about organizing it. Uh, at this point, you're going to start having them look at the program and start putting things under columns that this goes in. And this is, again, back with where their patterns. Well, Jane, you don't seem to have a lot of things on the intellectual side. This is when they're going to start seeing those gaps. Or you don't have very many things under physical. And they might want to add some things in those categories. But they're going to start pulling some of these things and dropping it into these categories and making a list. Because it's going to be so much easier for them, down the road even, when they decide to do one of these, or you have another family home meeting lesson on getting back into your goals, uh, for them to pull from a list that they've already made and that they know is getting them where they want to go. Then they can just pull from that list to make a goal. So, Dan, Dan's doing the program, he's done all of this, and he's organized them into goal areas. And so the first one he decided, like we talked about earlier, was going to be praying more because he wants to go on a mission. Right? So the next one in the social, he decides that he wants to try to not gossip. He's not even sure what gossiping is. He's pretty sure he doesn't do it, but he's going to put it under the category under social and begin learning about gossiping and what it is. And then under intellectual, he put art. And he's going to pull one of the things off of art, pottery, because they're going to do it as an activity, and he thinks that's a great idea. And he decides that that's one of the things he's going to work on under pottery. And under physical, Dan's been working on basketball, and he wants to get better at basketball. So that's going to be the thing that he works on under basketball. Now, as we go into more videos, I'll tell you about how Dan can plan those activities out, how he can act on them and review them. But for now, we're just going to cover that first section of discovery and how it works as we did, as we just did, how discovery worked under, and you can find things to go under those four areas, spiritual, social, intellectual, and physical, so that your kid can become a better person. And hopefully now, I know it seems like a lot of information, I just kind of threw it at you. But this is just for you to understand the program. You don't have to technically do the family home meetings and map it all out this way. But now, hopefully, you have a deeper understanding of this section, at least, of the program so that you feel confident in being able to run it in your family and being able to tailor it to what works for your family. Um, because, as Joseph Smith says, uh, we just teach them the principles and they allow them to govern themselves. So, hopefully you guys will do a great job of governing yourselves and we'll see you later.